now we're getting to know more about our guest, Mr. True Powell. And True is the managing director at the Alternative Events Company. Uh-huh. He's a partner in Candy Girl Kids Spa, uh-huh. creative director for Aston Performing Arts Academy. So you were a very enterprising child and you held your first event at age eight. Uh-huh. What was the event that you put on as an eight-year-old? It was a talent show. Um, me and my brother, who is my twin and my best friend, um, we just wanted to produce something within the area um, for for young people Um, so we found an abandoned garage which was like 50 yards from where we lived um, we gutted it out I just remember gutting everything out of the garage and um, just making bricks for like chairs um, and then we went out and asked people to perform we had to vet the talent of course <laughs> um, um, we went out and we asked people to perform and I think that there was like six performers all together and uh, we hosted the event um, we charged at the door um, it was just one of those experiences that yeah. was absolutely amazing and, and actually I, I didn't realise that I was kind of combining all my loves um, for enterprise in terms of charging people and making a profit yeah. for event management in terms of putting on an event, marketing it and doing all that, all the stuff in terms of content and and stuff and actually platforming arts with young people and giving young yeah. people a platform. So was that when you realised that this was your path? No. Or was that later on? Did that come later? Yeah, that was later on. I, um, as you do, um, you follow the trajectory that life has set out for you. So you, you do your education, you go to uni, you go to school, college, then you get a job, then you work at that job, and then you retire. But um, for me, I never realised, actually, um, that I was meant to be an entrepreneur, um, probably until, um, probably until, like, I would say 12, 12 years ago. I thought you were going to say something way older. Like, yeah, it was when I was about 30. No. And then you come with 12. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, like, yeah, 12, 12 years ago, I would, I would probably say that I was probably about 24, 23, 24, where I was like, okay, I need to take this entrepreneur thing seriously. Um, and even up to 30, I was working full time. Yeah. It's only at the age of 30, I'm 35 now, it's only at the age of 30 that I was like, right, I'm not working for anyone else now, I'm just working for myself and yeah. I made that plunge. Are you happy that you did? Yeah, 100%. Um, I feel I'm in charge of my own destiny. I feel that I can do kind of... I'm a type of person that is very creative yeah. and I like to do things in a certain way and I like to put my stamp on things and I can only do that if I'm working for myself. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it was just a no-brainer um, and it was interesting how, how that all happened. I was working, um, I've always worked in events, event management. Yeah. Um, so I was working for a health and safety organisation doing quite a few national, international events. Yeah. So I was kind of like in Dubai for like four times in six months, which wow. is a, which is a, it sounds glamorous, but it really isn't. You're just getting <laughs> off the plane, do, going straight to the hotel, doing an event and coming home. Okay. Um, but four times in six months is a lot um, for anyone who has a young family. Um, and they booked me to go again, and I was like, I don't want to go again. Yeah. Um, and there was like, you have to, it's part of your role. Um, I went to speak to HR, they was like, you have to. I even went to the CEO, and he was like, it's part of your role, like, you have to go. And I just wasn't feeling going again, so I was yeah. like, you know what, I'm leaving. And it just came out, like, literally, it just <laughs> came out. And I was, as soon as I left, I was like, oh my God, why what have I, I said I that? Like, I've got the kids to support, my wife, like, how am I going to leave? Um... And at the time, um, I, I previously won an Inspiring Leader of the Year award yeah. um, for the work that I was doing with the Academy, because um, I always ran the Academy um, in conjunction with working full-time. It was always a, a part-time thing. Yeah. Um, but because of the work that we was doing with the Academy, um, I won um, a Young Leaders of the Year award, um, and then part of that award, they gave me a mentor. Um, and the mentor was Mark Reeves. He was an amazing mentor. Um, and he was like the editor in chief of Trinity Mirror and Birmingham Mail and all, yeah. on, on all the media outlets. And, um, and I rung him and I was like, look, this is the situation. I've literally just said to her that I'm leaving. I can't find another job. In the hope that he would give me a job because I thought yeah to give me a job. Um, <laughs> and then um, he was just like, well, why don't you do it yourself? And I was like, you what? 
And he was like, do it yourself. And I was like, um, I'm, I'm not ready to do it myself. I, yeah. I don't want to do it myself. He was like, you are. Like, you've been entrepreneur well, since I've met you. You've been doing the stuff with the Academy. Like, you've built up an amazing network. You know events inside out. Do it yeah. yourself. And then um, we was having a conversation about it. And then in the end, he was like, you know what, True. I believe in you so much. I'm going to do all your branding work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that for you. Um, and you just need to then go and do it. And I'm going to give you your first job. Um, so what was your first job? So my first event was the Birmingham Mail um, Royal Brum launch. They had a huge... That was launching a new campaign. Yeah. Um, Trinity Mirror was um, within Digbeth and it was called Royal Brum. Um, and kind of, yeah, that was my first ever event that I worked on um, in okay. 2015 I think with, with Trinity Mirror and then they will say the rest is history. And how have your events grown since the initial event that you first did for Trinity Mirror? Oh my gosh I've been so blessed, I've been able to work on some of the most amazing events and projects, I've done stuff for ASOS, I've done stuff for um, Gearing which is an, an international hu- huge company yeah. um, that done kind of relocated um, I've done stuff for kind of BCU and awards and and actually I've been able to work on um, the MBCC awards which is the Midlands Business Community and Charity Awards. Yeah. Um, happens every year. Mainly focused around community and really recognising and celebrating the efforts of the community um, but the one that we just did in November um, we recognised yeah, Jimmy really and big. Beverly Knight. Like that was a huge mammoth. We've also founded a wedding company. Yeah. Would you say it's harder to pull off a perfect wedding than a perfect corporate event? 100%. I hate weddings. I, know, I shouldn't <laughs> say that. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Um, but I feel that weddings are a lot harder for li- uh, um, for less value. Um, and commercial- commercially, for me, in, in comparison with corporate events, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, so, um, but, and it's kind of business to consumer isn't it it's it's business to bride and it's not just any consumer it's a bride yeah um, and at the mo- and at the picky. best time it's just very difficult and very hard to get exactly what they want um, <laughs> <laughs> um because they're forever changing their minds yeah um so i prefer corporate i love working on weddings um, and I love when they are delivered and without any hitches and glitches and, and you know, it's fantastic. But actually, um, I do prefer corporate events because it's less stress and a bigger outcome. Yeah. Um, so your work with the Aston Performing Arts Academy, do you mm. have a musical background? Oh, my God, I absolutely love music. Ask me to play anything, I can't. <laughs> uh, but um, music, I just have a eye for talent and developing talent and yeah. I just have a, a passion for for music and, and the arts and, and what that can do to a person yeah. and how it's seen as an outlet and um, and growing up we was always and when I say we I mean me and my brother we was always into creativity and arts and but there was actually nothing out there for us yeah. in terms of two black boys in Newtown wanted to pursue creative arts and in that time it was just seen as a no-no everything was just sports you know a football club here a sports club the astral turf was just there it was just all sports 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 um but in the end we found a dance group that we joined the acronym was quan and that was queen of the night and there was 30 (laughs) females and just me and my brother representing for the males um but for me for me that was the only outlet that we could find where we could be yourself be and indulge and be, in your... And be unapologetic with it. And yeah. it was always known as the dancing and singing twins growing up because... Are you a twin? Yeah. I and did not yeah, know that. Yeah, we were a twin. And you, 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 he runs the academy with me um, alongside a, a, another lady called Angie. Oh, okay. Um, but we was always known as the dancing, singing twins, whether it was at Wallace Lola, whether it was at Holt, whether, anywhere within the end, we was always there <laughs> just repping and dancing and singing for the guys. And, and for us, that was really, really important because yeah. that, that was our let out. That was our kind of break breakthrough kind of thing. Definitely. So how does um, the organisation help young people? What kind of work do you do? So we provide a platform for young people to... um and empower young people to express themselves. Um, so currently, we're probably working with 120 young people um, within mainly vocals, performance, dance, drama, um, 
and music, musical instruments, um, and we provide very experienced um, and fantastic tutors to work with them on their talent. Um, but the, not only that, we provide fantastic performance opportunities yeah. for them to for them to showcase. So whether it's our own internal events, um, we just did Inspiring Brom Two, which was absolutely phenomenal at the Crescent. I feel like we kind of shut down Brom, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but then well, or whether it's the ball ring or yeah, you were there just over Christmas, weren't yeah, you? Doing or, uh, Christmas songs yeah. and caroling. It's the, the performance opportunities are pretty incredible. Like we do the Chamber Awards, um, which is like fourteen hundred corporates, um, and we do that every year. Um, wow. We do boring. Like we do like our event calendar in terms of our performance opportunities is off the chain. We're, we're like the most preferred corporate um, entertainment supplier in in the oh, Midlands. That's good. Mm. So. How do ch- how do people get involved in the academy, and is there an age limit or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, so we start at six and we go right up to twenty five. Okay. Um, but we do sessions on different days. Um, you can get involved if you email info at astonpaa dot com. Um, that's info at astonpaa dot com, or just follow any of our social media and just send us a DM. Uh, we have auditions twice a year. Um, that's not to say that if you miss an audition, you won't get in. Um, it's just that we, we like to keep things quite structured. Um, and, yeah, and then just come audition and then you, you'll get told if you're in and out. And when yeah. I say audition, we're not looking for the absolutely most premium, fantastic single performer. It's more about who they are as a person yeah. and what they can bring and, and whether they would gel with, with the academy. So, you appeared on Good Morning Britain last Mm -hmm. year to debate the premise of your candy girl business, Mm -hmm. which is beauty treatments for kids. Yeah. Um, What was that like? In terms of the experience, um, phenomenal. Um, At first, I was... you know a little apprehensive about going on because you know you hear all these reports and in my mind I was just thinking oh my god they're going to make me look stupid Um, (laughs) it's going to ruin my career no one's going to want to know like it's make or break Yeah. and all these things run through your mind um, and it's just fear isn't it Um, but actually in the end I was like well what's the worst that can happen Um, I'm not going to go out there and actually talk a load of rubbish because I know my ability and I know what I can bring and in, in, and in saying that, um, I'm very spiritual. So I, I you know, I prayed on it. Um, I said to God, if this is the way that you want me to, to do it, then I, you know, I follow your lead. Um, and yeah, He led me to to Good Morning Britain, and, and the experience itself was phenomenal. Um, it was just a, an opportunity for me to really promote not just the brand but myself as well, yeah. which is part of the wider strategy um, for me. So yeah. So did you have a lot of people agreeing or disagreeing with your standpoint you after know, the show aired? A lot of people agreed. There was very few people um, that disagreed. And I think partly because um, my, the, the panellist who I was with um, kind of made herself look a bit silly in terms of contradicting herself yeah. a little bit. And, and I think from that, she just lost she yeah. just lost um, pretty much most of the audience. And then they all kind of agreed um, with what I was saying, which... It was good. Uh, which was good. <laughs> <laughs> so what has it been like since starting Candy Girls? It seems like... I've heard a lot about it. It seems like it's got a real buzz in the city. Yeah, you know what? It's phenomenal. Um, the brainchild of it is actually my sister and her niece. I'm um, just kind of the business brain behind it. Yeah. Um, behind the vehicle. But in terms of... Um, what it's for and what it does um, and its brand um, which it, it's just grown from strength to strength um, is actually one of the most rewarding businesses um, that I've had the privilege of working on Yeah, um, we have people near and far come we've had people from Scotland come we've had people from Essex come just for Candy Girl which for me is, 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 That's cool. is, is quite humbling yeah. um, and, I can, and I can say in our heart of the press um, we have joined forces with Selfridges <gasps> I know wow that's amazing I know so we'll be in Selfridges in Selfridges in, um, that is big sort of a, 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 st- um, a spot for us and and they just want the brand they want to work with the brand um, and we're just really thankful that's really um, good for the opportunities that, yeah. that we're getting as a, as a brand and as a company I think that's really good because it's central yeah. because your other location I think is at King Standing yeah, yeah exactly so yeah this will give even more people the opportunity yeah. to come along it's um, 
we're associating our brand with a look, yeah, luxury with a luxury brand retailer. like Selfridges. Mm. So yeah, I'm definitely going to come and check that out good, when good, when good. that's all open and up and running. Good. What else is on the horizon for you in 2020, True? So for me, focus is mainly um, really developing the Candy Girl brand. Um, yeah. So you will see a host of things happening um, through that brand. Um, so you would see a development of merch and children's toys um, that would hopefully be stocked um, within South, which isn't sold and sold. You would yeah. see a cosmetic line. Um, you would see a rebrand. We've literally just brought a pink limo as well to really enhance our, our cool. party experience um, for for the for the kids. And you're just you will see it everywhere, and you will see me promoting it quite a lot. So if you're on my socials, I'm apologising from now <laughs> um, that you're going to see a lot of, of Candy Girl um, here and there, um, and not just that. Um, you'll see a lot of kind of me doing stuff in and around the city um so you'll see a lot of stuff coming from the performing arts academy um we do a lot anyway um, yeah. but in 2020 um we're going to be doing a lot more we're going to be really amping up our service offering to our young people we're going to be putting them first we're going to be doing a lot more events um, a lot more internal events if you haven't been to one of our shows I don't know what you've been doing. Like, <laughs> seriously, I, I can honestly say our shows are... They the could be on the West End, like, they're that big. Like, they're, they're just amazing, amazing When is your shows. next show? So, we will have one in April. A date's not set yet. Um, and then we'll have our end-of-year showcase, which is usually in October, November. Yeah. Um, but um, follow, follow us on our socials and, and you'll see all of them come out. Well, thank you very much for coming in to speak to us, True. Um, no, can you, you let us know where people can find you and your businesses online? Yeah, of course you can. So if you're online, if you go to truepower.com, um, that's truepower.com, you'll, you will see all of my associated businesses. Um, I also do kind of like speaking engagements and visiting lecturing and, and all kind of stuff. Um, that I just throw in there for the mix, um, but yeah, online you'll see my what I'm do, what I'm doing now. Follow me on social social media, true underscore power. That's true without any underscore power, um, and that's on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and then again, you'll see all that I'm up to, and um, and yeah, just um, keep join up the today. movement. Join the movement. Join the movement. You heard him. That is Mr. True Power.